it's an honor to be here. And uh, I've got 55 minutes. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, I already wasted one of them. Um, I am an artist, and I've been asked to talk about how art connects me to God. She's nodding. I was like, I think that's what I'm supposed to talk about. <laughs> so let me just show you some of the things that I, I like to do. But first of all, I just want to say, like, I don't always feel connected to God and um, haven't always feel connected to God. But art has always been there for me, and it's all, there's, always, there's always been the, the bridge, the bridge of art to God for me. And that's uh, been a constant in my life for which I'm grateful. Uh, this, I, I tried to kind of place the artwork that I do into a few buckets. And one of the first buckets is the beauty of a scriptural phrase. So sometimes there's just a phrase that I read in the scriptures and, and I think, oh, that is, there's poetry there and there's, something that I want to tap into. This is a painting called Cherubim and a Flaming Sword. I began this as I, when I was a senior here at the Brigham Young University and finished it as I was graduating. And this one is called Every Knee Shall Bow. Again, there's just like something about that phrase. And also, I'm, I'm not that smart. This is a case of the, uh, artwork being smarter than the artist. It's a very large painting, like 18 feet wide. And the first time I hung it up was at, in a show at the Springville Museum of Art. I got it up on the wall, and a woman came up behind me and said, wow, those people, they look like sheep, but then you get closer and they're people. And I'm like, oh yeah, I should have intended. <laughs> and, you know, thousands of people have seen that since. I, 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 that might be hyperbole. Thousands of people have not directly talked to me about that, but the series is probably over a hundred people have mentioned that to me. This one is called Why Weepest Thou? Again, there's just something about that phrase. So that's the first bucket. Be the beauty of the, the scriptural phrase. The second bucket I would place my work in is Jesus' teachings. I love, um, I just think, I'm, I, I won't be alone in this room when I say that he taught some pretty amazing things. And um, this kind of, that could blow our mind or shift our paradigms. And that the world would be a better place if um, we could internalize those lessons. So this one is called, this is, this is one I just did a couple days ago. Um, called The Truth Shall Set You Free. And here's another one. If you've been to the library lately, you might have seen this. We just hung this in the library last month. This is called uh, They Shall Be Comforted. And it's a painting that developed slowly in my studio, also kind of through the course of the pandemic when, you know, you couldn't really put your arm around somebody and um, in this painting you'll, you'll see lots of comforting hands even uh, Christ here in this image has three uh, comforting hands and around this man or woman another thing that brings me oh, oh as part of that I just want to say like for me part of the, Jesus' teaching is a big part of the golden rule. And, and so activism, to, to an extent, for me is important. And women's issues. And so then the third bucket is... Oh, sorry, I don't know. I'm kind of going kind of fast and kind of slow at the same time. It's weird. This one is, this is called the hill, that, the hill We Live On. And this one is called The Creation of Eve. Okay, the third bucket 
is hard stuff. And sometimes, sometimes I like to paint hard stuff because it is uh, maybe showing up, showing, putting a mirror up to our faces and saying this is something that is in our text that we have to deal with. Sometimes it's personal, like this is in our text and I have to deal with it. So um, one of those would be, for example, the killing of Laban, right? These two are pieces that I recently did from First Nephi. I, it's interesting to see that graph. and I, I contributed a little bit to the, the spike in the last three, three years. Um, and this one is called, uh, when Nephi says that he, I, would sh I would shrink and not live, right? And those are the kind of hard things that I think when I'm painting them, it's like immersing myself in what does this mean? Who said it? Why? Um, and how do we deal with that today, right? And when I posted the, this part of the book on my Instagram account, JKR Book of Mormon, by the way, you can see, I've done three series of Book of Mormon paintings in the last few years. And I won't show you the actual uh, Laban scene because it's a little explicit for these hallowed halls. <laughs> but um, you might also be asking, like, this guy makes a living as an artist. These are pretty, pretty rough pictures. Well, let me tell you about these Book of Mormon paintings. I thought for a long time, well, what can I add to the imagery of the Book of Mormon? I put it off for a long time. I've done very few images from, you know, from the, either the history of the restored gospel or the Book of Mormon. But, you know, as the, as we were learning more kind of as a large group, public Latter-day Saint population about the seer stone, I thought a lot about that. And I thought maybe I could make, I could do kind of a meditation on that process. So I actually embedded a clear stone in a hat. Um, and I cheated because I cut a hole in the bottom of the hat so that I could see through the stone. And I painted all of these paintings through the stone. And one of the things that I wanted to accomplish by doing that was removing myself from being able to really do a highly polished painting. I wanted it to, to kind of force an abstraction. And for me, that also takes the, the particular, takes us away from the particulars and focuses on the principle, right? So the story becomes uh, uh, detached from specifics. And a lot of times we want specifics so bad that, badly that it uh, detracts from like the message uh, and the principles that we're trying to get out of the story. So anyway, um, I believe that the BYU Special Collections now owns this hat, but um, so I've, I've done, anyway, so that explains kind of that style. But again, difficult themes, difficult themes. That's one of the buckets that I like to paint. Uh, the fourth bucket that I would put uh, my work in is painting as prayer or as a plea for divine intervention. And so I do lots of things where there angels interceding or spirits whispering again angels interceding in important moments and so back to uh, just really quickly how art connects me to God I made a promise I made a covenant with God and it wasn't I mean I did make temple covenants as well but that's not what this was this was a covenant that and I promised God that if I could figure out, if I would be shown a path to do art, which I felt called to do, um, that I would help uh, younger people, or well, you know, not necessarily younger, but people that came up after me to similarly find their way as artists. So 
here's a representation of the day that I kind of came back from my figure drawing class here at the Y and I was so excited about artwork and I knelt in prayer and, and made this promise. And that promise has really given me cur courage and strength to um, continue to make art and to feel that God was behind me. This is, uh, I'm trying to think if, these are all from a different presentation, so maybe that's the only thing I wanted to show you. I, I did want to show it, oh, oh, just that he, that, that opportunities were, came my way. Um, and this is me on my mission in Rome, Italy, which I felt was a, the hand of God in my life to send me there as an inspiring artist. That's the mission van. As soon as we um, got off the plane, all of a sudden we were in this van driving around the Colosseum. We drove up into this church next to the Colosseum and they walked us in and I was face to face with um, the Michelangelo's marble of um, Moses. And I was just like this kid from Crumlin that had never been on, had been on one plane ride to Las Vegas. So it was like mind expanding. This was one of my teachers, Patrick Devonis, on the steps of the Met in New York City, which um, I was grateful to have teachers that could lead and guide me um, after, you know, after through college, even when I dropped out through a fit and dropped out of BYU and studied with Patrick for a while and then came back and BYU was nice and let me back in and was able to get a degree. Uh, Patrick helped me uh, learn some things about edges and values and kind of a classical approach to drawing. Uh, we exercised that with the, the deaf mask. Um, anyway, it's not all fun and games, right? Here is um, the sun shining through the smoke that was smoke from a fire over our home in Woodland Hills. Here is um, us hurrying, scurrying to take a giant painting off the wall as we were evacuating because of the fire. And lo loading it into a very small pickup truck. Thank you, Marco Davis, for that. Didn't know if we were gonna be able to come, come back. I mean, that's, this is just a little blip on a long, much longer history, but my point is that sometimes we don't feel connected. Sometimes there is darkness. Some, many times there is uncertainty. Art, for me, has been a type and a shadow of the faith journey, the journey through life. Many times we can only see one step at a time, like the hymn says, lead kindly light. And when I'm making a, a work of art, a lot of times I can only see like what the next thing is to do on the painting or the sculpture. So I just want to leave that with you that, um, that sometimes we can only see one, one step farther and, and faith is the order of the day. And I just want to leave you with a, a, a scripture as well. I don't know, Jenny said, we, we clap, do we clap for Jenny? Well, maybe this isn't a church meeting. But um, let me just read this uh, verse in Isaiah, which says, Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me and my Lord has forgotten me. Can a woman forget her nursing child or show no compassion for even these may forget, yet I will not forget you. See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. Your builders outdo your destroyers, and those who laid you waste go away from you. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather, they come to you. As I live, says the Lord, you shall put all of them on 